Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Ray Kugel reporting. A ceasefire in Yemen. Houthi fighters in Yemen say they've accepted a five-day humanitarian ceasefire proposal from Saudi Arabia set to begin Tuesday. But Sunday's announcement came just hours after warplanes from the Saudi-led coalition bombed the residence of former President Ali Abdullah Saleh in the capital Sana'a. Saleh was not believed to have been home at the time and later appeared on television standing in front of the rubble. Last week, the United States and Saudi Arabia announced plans for the ceasefire in Yemen, where the Saudi-led coalition is waging an air campaign against the Houthis, a northern Yemeni militia that overran parts of the country in recent months. Eight agencies report Saudi bombings and Houthi fighting have killed hundreds of civilians since March. One person was killed Sunday during clashes with Burundi police in the capital Bujumbura as protesters defied an order banning street demonstrations over President Pierre Nkurunziza's decision to run for a third term. At least 14 people have died and more than 200 wounded in demonstrations since last month. Macedonian President Georgie Ivanov says police prevented what he calls a coordinated terror attack. That after an armed group battled officers in northern Macedonia on Saturday. The fighting in the city of Kumanovo left 22 people dead including eight police officers and 14 gunmen. 37 policemen were wounded. President Ivanov told a meeting of the Macedonian National Security Council on Sunday that the gunmen were trying to cause chaos and fear. He also said that the lives of civilians were at risk. This is VOA News. U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson is warning the worldwide terrorist threat is entering what he calls a new phase, where media-savvy Islamist extremists are successfully attracting so-called lone wolf attackers to their cause. Speaking on ABC's This Week program, Secretary Johnson said the Islamic State group's influence is spreading far beyond the battlegrounds of the Middle East. He urged Americans to be vigilant and aware. This week brings increased pressure on U.S. lawmakers to reform or reauthorize the National Security Agency's ability to gather domestic telephone records for anti-terrorist purposes. The program expires at the end of the month. VOA's Michael Bowman reports. Patrick Leahy is the top Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Committee. I believe we have to protect our national security, but we also have to protect our civil liberties, which make us unique as a country. Exposed by fugitive former NSA contractor Edward Snowden, the program caused a firestorm when Americans learned of vast telecommunications monitoring by a shadowy U.S. agency. The program reportedly collects and stores phone records, but not the content of calls made. Michael Bowman, Washington. A key exit poll shows Polish President Bronisław Komorowski finishing second in Sunday's presidential elections behind conservative challenger Andrzej Duda. The poll, commissioned by Polish national media and released moments after the voting ended, gives challenger Duda almost 35% of the vote. Mr. Komorowski is shown winning just over 32%. No official results have been released, but exit polling, if confirmed, will trigger a May 24th runoff vote between the two top vote-getters. Hundreds of thousands of people still remain without shelter and possessions following last month's devastating earthquake in Nepal. International organizations warn it's leaving poor women and girls desperate and vulnerable to human traffickers. Ron Corbin has more. Non-government organizations, NGOs, say the criminal networks are especially targeting Nepal's rural communities. 
even using the cover of relief efforts to kidnap or lure women away. The United Nations says up to 15,000 girls are trafficked each year from Nepal, forced into sex work as far away as South Korea and South Africa, although the vast majority are lured to India, where thousands work in brothels. Ron Corbin for VOA News, Bangkok, Thailand. Liberia is celebrating the milestone of being free of the Ebola virus, but the country's president is urging the public to remain vigilant. One health official warned that Ebola remains active in neighboring Sierra Leone and Guinea. And Cuba's President Raul Castro visited the Vatican Sunday to personally thank Pope Francis for his efforts to end five decades of tensions between the U.S. and Cuba. I'm Ray Kugel in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.